Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a detailed look at the latest on Storm Arwin which is producing some very strong winds and some heavy precipitation including heavy rain and for some some very heavy snow and with the uh, with the winds we could even be seeing blizzard conditions. Now if you haven't seen my video from earlier do check that out as I did go into detail on the current warnings, but I'll also have a look at them again in this video. But there is now a red warning, danger to, to life warning for wind across um, eastern Scotland down into North East England. It's only the second time this warning has ever been issued. I think the last time was in 2016 um, for a named storm back then. So very rare warning um, and we only really get these for severe events. 100 mile per hour gusts are possible so do make the necessary precautions if you are um, potentially going to be impacted by this. Even if you're on the amber or yellow warning zones, do make sure you do stay um, up to date with the warnings and stay tuned to the radar and the forecasts. So as you can see with the live radar at the moment, you can see we have Storm Arwen spreading in the centre of the lows just off of the north, uh, just off the coast into the North Sea. You can see weather fronts, the occluded front pushing in to northeast Scotland, northeast England, and you can see rain off the coast and at the immediate coastline. But over any moderate higher ground across many parts of central Scotland, northern England, it is readily turning to snow. And we are seeing some quite significant accumulations in the normal spots, really, over the Scottish Highlands, over northern England. We are seeing 10 to 15 centimetres quite widely over higher ground and you can start to see it is spreading southwards now we're seeing a band of winter precipitation moving into the midlands and northwest england now one thing i must say if you are looking at radars don't always trust the rain and snow divide sometimes it will show rain on the radar and snow is falling out of the sky sometimes it will show snow and it's just rain so don't take these too literally they will be roughly right but the exact boundaries are sometimes a little bit iffy. Best thing to do is look out the window, look at a lamppost, and you'll be able to see if it's rain or maybe a mix uh, or snow. You can see elsewhere a lot of showers, and they are turning to snow over higher ground of Wales, over parts of Ireland and Northern Ireland as well. Some very severe impacts from this storm coming up over the next 12 hours. So make sure you do stay safe if you're out there. If we do now have a look at the current weather warnings, you can see... It's quite a bit of a mess, but we do have a red warning for wind that started at 3 p.m. today. So we've had a couple hours of it. Um, I haven't heard anything too severe at this stage, but it may uh, just not hit the news yet. Um, but high winds associated with Storm Arwen will bring damage and travel disruption until 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. So luckily, there's only about six hours left of this warning. Uh, six seven hours left of it so luckily it's not too long lasting but it is severe nonetheless gusts of 80 to 90 miles per hour are likely and these will generate some very large waves and as i said in my video earlier it's a very unusual direction to be getting um amber and red warnings for wind um coming in from the north northeast i would be i mean if this came in sort of december january time with a little bit colder air to our north and the depth of cold of the Arctic just being that much colder, we would be looking at historic sort of blizzards with this. However, being at the end of November with the air just a degree or two warm in a few spots is looking like, although there's going to be very, very strong winds, of course, precipitation is going to be a little bit iffy. And if we have a look at those warnings, you can see there are actually three yellow warnings for snow, two today, one across northern Scotland that we had a look at um, yesterday. We also have another one issued across the spine of northern England, where it's actually snowing right now. A spell of hill snow may bring some disruption to travel Friday night into Saturday, so from 5pm this evening until 10am tomorrow. Again, nothing massive, 10 to 15 centimetres, but considering we've had really little snow at all, apart from maybe northern Scotland so far this autumn, it's going to come to a shock to some people. Elsewhere, we do have amber warning around the general red warning zone, and if we do move to Saturday... We still have that red warning, amber warning still for the early hours. We have a yellow and snow ice warning introduced across Scotland from midnight until 10 a.m. We then also have a widespread amber warning across the west coastal areas of Wales and southwest England. Severe impacts from that um, till 9 a.m. And you can see again another yellow warning for snow from midnight until 10 a.m. So that's why we could be seeing some severe 
conditions from snowfall potentially across the midlands down into central southern england you can see they've excluded london and that's because of how marginal this event's going to be it could be rain it could be snow and of course in london with urban heating it is probably more likely to tip it to rain so that risk is slightly lower than the surrounding area but if you're in london it's not guaranteed that you'll see rain you could see some snow you could even be surprised with a covering of snow and um, that is not out of the question so very severe impacts coming up over the next 12 to 24 hours if you are interested in looking at these detail uh, these in more detail i will link it in the description or go just go to the met office website clear instruction to follow to the warnings and have a look at those for your area you can type in your sort of city or town or village and the Met Office will show you the warnings for you as well. So do check that out if you are interested and you want to have a little more detail look at these. Because there are so many, um, it's too difficult um, to go through or too, too time consuming, let's just say, to go through all um, of the sort of yellow and yellow warnings in more detail than just having a look at what uh, their time frame and the associated risks. Now, if we do have a look at the UK Met Office run, see how that is evolving for this storm. Now, you can see as I'm recording this around 6 p.m., you can see there's a lot more snow than actually is forecasted by the UK Met Office run. So that's just something you need to keep an eye on. Sometimes the models are underdoing it, sometimes they're overdoing it. This stage, I'd say they're slightly underdoing it in terms of snow. We are seeing much more widespread snow inland. The precipitation is actually more widespread than this is showing. Also, it does move inland throughout tonight, and we should start to see rain impact the Midlands into northern England, or precipitation and potentially snow, by around 9, 10, 11 p.m. this evening. Um, and we are just going to see a barrage of of sort of wintry precipitation, rain, sleet and snow, all the way until around midday tomorrow across many central areas. And that's why we have these yellow warnings in force, because you can see a lot of pink mixing in, so a lot of snow mixing in within it. But it's not really um, sort of lining up. When we don't have massively high ground in these areas, yes, there are elevated areas, maybe 100, 200 metres. There's no massive hills in sort of central England. So it is a bit confusing why it's showing pink in some areas and not in others. And again, it is just how marginal it is. You can obviously here the UK Metal has run, has temperatures maybe a degree colder just uh, in a few of these spots with the dew point slightly lower as well, which will make a difference. Beyond that, the precipitation will eventually sort of decrease throughout tomorrow afternoon and eventually pull away. Now, the main risk after tomorrow afternoon, really, once all that precipitation clears, will be a few wintry showers in the north and the east, but it will be the temperatures. They will be plummeting through early hours of Sunday and Monday as well. Snow showers still across Scotland and maybe in the eastern half of the UK as well. And that's just something we need to keep an eye on, of course. And then through Monday, potentially some heavier snow moving into Scotland. But that is uh, ahead of milder air pushing in, which is going to think, bring things much milder for all. So if we do now have a look at the wind gusts, of course, the probably the most severe thing from this storm. I mean, everyone loves to talk about the snow, but the most significant impact from this storm will be the strong winds. And you can see 100 plus mile per hour gusts coming into that eastern half of the Scotland and northeastern England. Inland, still 70, 80 mile per hour gusts. And down the west coast, through the Irish Sea, 60, 70, 80 miles per hour gusts as well. Now, the winds will slowly die down through the early hours, but still 70, 80, 90 mile per hour gusts are still possible. And the main focus for the winds will be shifted to Wales and the southwest, where we could be seeing 70, 80 miles per hour, and it's slowly dying down across the northeast through the early hours. So by Saturday morning, winds should be lower. Still could be some very strong gusts around, but it won't be the 80, 90, 100 mile per hour gusts we could be seeing this evening. It'll be very, very wild out there this evening if you are going out. Now, after that, we're going to be seeing tomorrow, generally, winds still strong, but slowly dying away. And by early hours of Saturday, things are turning much calmer um, ahead of weather fronts moving in by Monday. Now, one important thing we also need to have a look at is the dew points. Now, this is very important for precipitation. Now, of course, for snow, you need the dew point at freezing or below. It's sort of a necessity. You have to have the dew point lower than freezing. So if we do have a look at around midnight tonight, you can see actually across many eastern areas of the United Kingdom, the dew point is around one or two degrees showing on this latest UK Met Office run. Now that dew point will stay around one or two degrees in the far east, 
but there is that pocket of much colder air to the north and the west around zero minus three minus four degrees and a few spots for the dew point and it's where those two meet because of course where that dew point is a little bit higher is where we've got the slightly milder air and that will be where the precipitation is forming but it's where it meets that colder dew point that is where we will see snow and where that dividing line sets up that's where we can see the heaviest snow and you can see it's down the spine of the British Isles and that's why the UK Met Office has those yellow warnings down the centre because that's where the precipitation will meet the colder air so that's where we could see the be seeing the colder dew points but we've had events over the last few years um even the last five years let's just say where it's been forecasted rain and we've seen heavy snow or it's been forecasted snow and we've seen rain so these models can be wrong even just a couple hours out um it will definitely be a now cast situation and looking at the live radar in terms of snowfall falling out the sky I definitely do think there is quite a high chance we do see snow. Whether it accumulates, um, that is the big uncertainty, of course. Now, beyond that, you can see dew points are bitterly cold for early hours of Sunday, most of Sunday, and into Monday as well. Could be getting double digit dew points at times, and that is going to mean temperatures are going to be very low. And if we do have a look at the max temperatures from the UK Met Office run, you can see this evening around three or four degrees in the south, cooling down to maybe one, two degree. Again, it's where that milder air, or slightly milder air, just, let's just say, it's only three or four degrees, meets the colder air to the west around freezing one or two degrees. And it's where that meets is we're going to be seeing the snowfall. Beyond that, tomorrow afternoon, temperatures really don't climb, maybe three or four degrees max. Through many central areas, we're still seeing a pocket down in the East Anglia region around 6-7 degrees, but most areas are going to be cold, and with the wind chill around, it's going to feel bitterly cold as well. Overnight Saturday, temperatures are going to plummet for many, and by early hours of Sunday, around 6-7am, many parts of England, Wales, and pretty much all of Scotland, and many eastern parts of Northern Ireland and Ireland are going to be around freezing, if not below down, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 degrees. It's going to be the coldest night we've had so far this autumn into winter season, but it is likely to be beaten by Monday morning as well. If we have a look at Sunday afternoon, you can see temperatures are really struggling above freezing, 1, 2, 3 degrees. It's likely to be dry for many areas in the west and central areas, a few showers in the eastern and north, but many areas will be dry and it'll be quite beautiful out there, but it's going to be frigid and you can see over hills and in scotland temperatures hardly getting off freezing and then the temperatures will plummet once again for early hours of monday we can be seeing temperatures widely again around minus two minus three minus four degrees coldest temperatures actually in central england into northern england with milder slightly starting to push into scotland and by monday afternoon still pretty frigid around two or three degrees but by tuesday milder is starting to push back in so turning a lot milder after that now, if we also have a look at the icon and we'll have a look at the GFS, of course, have a look at their precipitation as well. Just to give sort of another perspective, you can see throughout this evening, you can see again a massive mix of rain and snow. Um, actually seeing some very heavy snow there through central England, the Midlands, northern England, and again, just a big mix. And then throughout Sunday, snow showers down the east, uh, and then generally nothing too major before weather fronts push through. By Tuesday, if we have a look at snow depth, you can see, of course, this evening, not showing anything too significant for snow depth from the Icon run, which isn't too unsurprising considering yet about how patchy that snow was and how sort of inconsistent it is, how marginal it is. Again, it will only be isolated areas to low-lying areas that see accumulation from this falling snow. I do think there is a very decent possibility many areas see falling snow, but assessing snow is looking quite unlikely, and I mean unlikely. Um, it's not that it's not possible, it's just unlikely with the current conditions. Um, so we'll have to see what we wake up to tomorrow morning, really. Now, if we have a look at the GFS, again, another potential scenario. You can see, of course, feeling very heavy snow pushing down from the north, bitterly cold air digging in behind it with a very cold wind chill as well. And again, um, snow showers down the east through Sunday, and then things turning a bit drier for Monday for many in the central England, southern England, parts of Wales as well, before weather fronts push through from Monday evening to Tuesday. Now, another thing we can have a look at on the UK Met Office, uh, sorry, on the GFS is the freezing level. And you can see as of around 3 pm, 6 pm, freezing level is around 200 meters across Scotland, um, which is where we, why we're seeing snowfall to around 200, 300 meters. And over the course of the evening, you do see it starts to drop, maybe 100, 200 metres. Now, of course, snow can fall lower than that, but that's the level that it will be freezing. Um, so you can see 
it gets to ground level by sort of Saturday evening, and that's when we have a widespread frost, but we won't be having any precipitation around then. So you can see that that freezing level is around two, 300 metres quite widely across England and northern England. That's why over the hills, of course, favoured for snow, but you can't rule out low-lying areas, of course, as well. Um, if we did see that slightly inaccurately um, forecast, then it drops down lower than that. If we also have a look at snow depth, you can see, actually, GFS typically is forecasting um, a good five centimetres, maybe a couple of centimetres widely, maybe four or five centimetres locally across many areas. So very interesting seeing that from the GFS. I doubt it will come off like that, but you never know. We'll have to keep an eye really on what happens. Now, if we do briefly go through the GFS and GFS ensembles, now, of course, I wanted to dedicate a lot of time to Storm Arwen in this video, so we'll run through this briefly for the longer term. So you can see Storm Arwen moving through at the moment. And then we have high pressure around, things turning quite frigid through Sunday and Monday, nothing too major happening before weather front starts pushing from the west. Now we see another brief northerly wind by next Wednesday, cold air pushing through before things turn westerly once again. And you can see sort of oscillating between milder and colder sectors. Now one thing we need to keep an eye on is what we've actually been seeing throughout some of the GFS runs recently, is this Scandinavian high. I have had a look at this run already and it actually does go very interesting towards the end of it. You can see we do see some significant blocking towards Scandinavia. And although the UK is actually um, stormy um, and quite unsettled, we do have a big Scandinavian high going and bitterly cold air spreading through Eastern Europe and Russia, heading into Western Europe, potentially, and the UK. And we'd have to run this on another couple of days to see how that does progress. But very interesting. That's a very similar pattern to a beast from the East pattern, where we see big Scandinavian high and we see bitterly cold air moving in. So we'll have to keep an eye, really, what happens with that. It's cropping up within the models, so we can't rule it out at this stage. But it does look like a very interesting scenario for the middle of December. And just something we need to keep, of course, an eye on in the longer term. Of course, it's uncertain, so it's not guaranteed to come off but it's just something interesting to look at for the middle of December. Now, if we have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see they're actually pretty cold. We're very cold at the moment, of course, quite high level of precipitation coming through the next six hours or so, six, 12 hours, especially in London. And then temperatures rise up towards the 1st of December with temperatures around average. So it's not actually that mild, but it's going to be a lot milder than it is currently with temperatures around 10 or 11 degrees. Then we do see another drop as we see another brief northerly wind move in, potentially some snow showers further north. And then we see temperatures just stay really below average. A bit of up and down, some colder outliers, some much milder outliers like the GFS operational run. But generally temperatures around or below average. Quite a bit of precipitation around as well. So it is looking unsettled and cool. Not cold. If we were looking for snow, we would again be looking at minus five line. And you can see most of the ensemble members are around freezing to maybe minus one, minus two, minus three degrees. Which isn't quite cold enough for snow, especially in the south. But just chilly conditions. Seasonable really if we do have a look at the new snow depth spikes of course we have a love love to have a look at this you can see most of the ensembles are forecasting some snow over the next 12 hours in london and as i said and as we had a look at the models we just have to keep an eye really on what happens uh, with that of course if we do have a look briefly at glasgow to have a look um how that is looking you can see again uh, if we have a look at 850 hp temperature and precipitation you can see again similar to london in terms of quite cold not really quite cold at the moment, getting down to minus 10 at 850 HPA, rising up to around or just above average, another northerly wind moves in, and then we stay at or just below average with a lot of precipitation around. So it doesn't look particularly mild in the longer term, but it doesn't look brutally cold either. It just looks around average or just maybe a little bit colder than average. But anyway, the main focus is on Storm Arwen, so make sure you stay safe out there. Keep an eye on the warnings, uh, and I'll see uh, and update you again probably tomorrow morning, uh, have a look at what is happening with the latest on the potential snow uh, um, throughout tonight into tomorrow as well. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.